Well, for a little over a month now, I have went absolutely crazy. I have been racing these 112 scale on-road carpet cars, the GT12 class. It's a spec class, 1S battery, super fun, learning all kinds of new skills, things I never thought that I would have learned in my life. So let's talk about this amazing indoor fun that you guys can have probably in an area close to you. I'm Chad, this is the Dorky M40 RC channel. Let's talk some GT12 today. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everybody. It has been a very long time, but I promise you there's gonna be a lot coming up, especially when it comes to these little babies right here. So what are we talking about? We are talking about carpet racing indoor, as you can see, fast 10, 11 second laps. Some people pull a nine second, nine and a half second laps. And this is just running a spec motor type of class. We've been doing all of this awesome racing up at the Norcar RC Speedway in Burbank, Ohio. Inside Norcar RC Raceway, there is WNT Hobbies, where I'm telling you, the people are just as amazing as the facility itself. I cannot highly enough recommend for anybody in this area, Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Indiana, wherever. If you are interested in getting into indoor carpet on road or even oval racing, this is the place to come and spend a little bit of time. They can serve all of your needs. And let me tell you, they have been nothing but amazing to me. The people that work there, big shout out to Wayne and Freddie and Travis. The facilities are just super amazing, super clean. As you can see from the videos here, we go up there a couple nights a week for practice, testing, tuning, and we have like a three week on road rotation. Then they switch the track to oval and then back to on road again for another three weeks. And of course they run all kinds of different touring car classes and everything else, but I have decided to start with the GT12 class. So what is this GT12 class? Let's take a look at the cars real quick here on the bench. So these again are 12 scale cars, so super small. And they run, you know, a lot of nice little super bodies. This is a protoform Corvette. There's a lot of different ones. Cars all up got to be 750 grams. Your body has to be 50 grams. And there's various other things that have to go on. I started out my journey with the CRC CK25, which we will talk about in another video. It is a super awesome car to start off with. The price you just simply cannot beat. It's like two twenty five for the kit. Maybe you're going to spend another fifty to hundred dollars in extra parts. That's like going to get you all the spares of everything you need, including gears and all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, there's going to be things that you're going to need to get as well. Because what we have in GT12 is we run a US GT spec motor, which is kind of like a tuned down spec fixed timing 21.5 motor. And then we run these uh, spec tires, which are made by, I cannot remember exactly who's made by, but pretty much everybody in the GT12 class has to run the same tire. You also are running 1S. So typically we are running like Hobby Wing Electronics or any other thing out there that is 1S. Battery is pretty much up to you, whatever you got. Um, I've been running these Trinity batteries because I'm new and I can't really get to the point yet where I'm gonna notice a big increase of battery performance. And I had a buddy, OG Bo, you guys all know OG Bo, hook me up with a couple of his batteries. They've been well-maintained as well. Now, these cars are super, super fun, but they are hypercritical of a lot of stuff. It is a very, very, very steep learning curve, especially for a guy like me that has only went straight and not really done a whole lot of indoor stuff. I've done stuff in circles with oval. That went pretty well. I haven't really got into a true oval pan car type of thing, but you know, this is the closest we're going to get. These are actually pan cars is what they're called. And the whole reason that they're kind of called a pan car is they don't have like shocks. Like how these things work is you have a plate in the front and then it's kind of connected to these uh, pivot balls that are in 
the back of the car and you basically build up like this pod here that has your whole motor, your differential, which you can have most people that are super talented run an actual uh, lock diff, uh, spool type of differential. You can go with ball diffs like I have here that are a little bit more forgiving. You can also go with gear diffs. So you've got a single plate chassis design. This right here is an X-Ray X20, X1222 version. So it's almost their newest version. And then you can kind of see in the front here, what we got going on is this is your spring that basically will control everything, how your car hooks up from front to back. And then of course there's some actual springs up here in the front because basically what happens is these whole steering arm mechanisms are mounted and they kind of just go up and down up there. So, and you're actually kind of, pushing up as you can see so you don't have your actual independent type of suspension you have these side tubes here which they call side dampers also in the red over here and what you do is you kind of lube them up with some oil 5,000, 10,000, whatever, to help kind of control the car a little bit. And then you'll have front kingpins that are kind of in the front of these cars that you can put some oil on as well. And that's Sounds like it's pretty much it, trying to give a really high level of everything here because when it comes to these things, uh, half a millimeter, a millimeter will drastically change the way that your car can handle, drive, everything else. The good thing about them is when it comes to gearing and all that kind of stuff like that, they all kind of like top out the same. Like a lot of the better drivers tend to run a closer of a one-to-one -one type of gear ratio. Somebody like me, I'm running like a 70 spur and like a 56, 54 type of pinion just because I'm still learning throttle control a lot more. And you need a little bit of that going around this, of course. You know, you're letting off constantly and going, except where you have big sweepers and all that kind of stuff. But really, it just comes down to timing, track time, and building a connection with your car, which is something that I really have struggled to do. I blamed it a long time on my Sanwa radio. And, of course, you know, we got the Sanwa back when we were drag racing because, you know, it had all of the fancy tools and it was a double bonus because, hey, this is like one of the best radios, if not the best, that you can get for RC racing. The problem is, though, is that this thing is fast. The communication to the radio and the servos is like ultra fast. The good thing about it is that you can actually add latency into this radio, which is a good thing for me by turning down your fielding settings. So I'm using things in the sand wall that I never, ever thought I would actually do. But recently I kind of had a little brainstorm and I saw a YouTube video of a guy kind of speaking about the same issues that he had, um, I, that I was having. He was having a hard time connecting with his car and his M17. And really it came down to just more of some mechanical things. Um, we can talk about it in, an, in a later video, but I think it's important to success about this is having the right controller and control feel that will help you build your connection with your car. It's more about like gearing, slowing it down, but you've got to be able to hit your lines in this stuff. Every time you tap a wall or a side of something, you're losing like a 10th. And you know, you really need to like not do that. If you tap a wall, obviously five times in a lap, the well, there's a half second off your lap. So what I actually did was flip this thing completely where now I have a normal soft spring on my trigger but I have the super hard spring on my steering wheel. So that way it takes out a lot of the nervousness and twitching that I was getting. And also it keeps me from what these guys like to say, ham fisting where you're constantly rocking this thing back and forth to its limits, trying to get the car to turn when you really don't need to. But there's a lot of important things that go on in the radio, of course, you know, things like Expo, dual rate, these cars, you really want to make sure on an on-road car that your car turns the same amount to the left as it does to the right. So, you know, there's different sub trims and of course your EPA limits and stuff that you're going to be setting up on your radio. 
ESC settings, you know, again, we're all pretty much running like the Hobby Wing 1S. There's very few um, electronic companies that go in the 1S route, and, you know, they work just fantastic. Um, it's no timing or anything like that in the GT12 class, so you're actually able to, you know, use drag brake and everything, but we run this in a blinky mode, so there's no modifications to the softening or any of those other extra little tools that are built inside of the Hobby Wing itself. And then, of course, we all have, like, our transponders, and, you know, you can run any kind of servo inside either of these cars. Some servos fit better in different cars than others and things like that. We'll kind of get into that as we look, take a look a little bit closer at a car like this with the CRC and then a car like the X-Ray in some upcoming videos. But in this class, things like shims are your friend. You really, really have to make sure that things are perfectly built and things like your right heights are equal on each side. Tires are true to each side. Yes, we do cut down the tires a little bit. We also um, have found that just kind of like taking them off, putting them on the truers, sanding them, things like that in between runs has helped take some of the gunk off of it. Uh, they're, they're, it's basically kind of like no prep all over again because using cleaning the tires after a run, sanding the tires, and then putting prep on the tires for the run. The good thing is about them is, you know, they're going to usually hold up a little bit longer. Um, the better driver you are and the less you're banging into the walls, the more your tires are going to run. And, you know, you can see that I ran this set all day on Saturday, and typically I would have some chunks out of my tires and stuff, from falling apart but things just kind of clicked for me this past weekend and I didn't have any tire chunking at all and we'll talk about more about my results and all that kind of stuff in another video but to sum it up I was not good and I'm still not good but I was able to actually finally put together a consistent weekend where I was two to three laps off the pace instead of five, six, seven, and then kind of fluctuating throughout the day. All my times were kind of the same. So all I needed to do was just learn and focus on driving and do little changes to the car, make sure that my race program was solid. And that's really a key to these GT12s that I have found is, you know, you definitely need to make sure that things are just all ready to go between races. You know, you want to make sure that your gear mesh and your diff and everything is nice and free because if you bump a wall a little bit, the tolerances and spacing back here are so tight that it could basically push this diff together just enough to kind of lock everything up and keep it from rotating freely. Uh, gear mesh, these are super small gears and my close up vision is not very good anymore. Um, and plus it's just kind of like a learned thing that I have found out, but I am not very good at setting a gear mesh and I can definitely admit that right now I'm getting better, but these guys just kind of are like, Oh, just hold this and move it and feel it. And you know, I end up looking, uh, with my magnifiers at the mesh here and it all looks the same to me. Mine looks the same as theirs, but for some reason their spins super nice and mine sometimes will sound crunchy and lock up. And then of course, the other thing is pretty much just like, you know, we did on our drag cars. Like you need to make sure that every screw is tight and you kind of figure out like what screws are going to loosen up. Um, as you start running these different cars, uh, so far after a couple nights with the x-ray, I found that screws have held a little bit better on it than the CRC. Um, but you know, screws a screw and all that kind of stuff. Just obviously there's a little bit of tolerance differences and everything. But again, we're talking about way better value built into something like this, uh, than to this, but We'll talk about it more later, why I've chosen to go one way versus the other. So I think the last thing to talk about is just besides the actual fun that the class is, is just how much you are learning about RC. And in the meantime, you know, I've, you started learning to use the, the tire truer back 
with the oval tires and it was a lot different just throwing a hex tire on there and just cutting off some foam um, this stuff is obviously requires a lot more of a finer detail because you're cutting rubber and you just can't honk off a bunch of rubber off these things you have to skim these things really lightly and make sure everything is good that way your bearings are obviously ultimately super important like you want to make sure that you are spinning really good and you know the way that these pan car like front wheels go on here is just with like nuts and you kind of tighten the nut up tight enough to where it doesn't spin and you keep on backing it off little by little by little until it actually spins kind of weird a lot of this stuff is kind of weird i don't know why they do things like that um you know there's you got to undo three bolts to get a tire off on each side doesn't sound like a big deal, but just coming from things that I've done with buggies and everything, you know, things like that are a little annoying. Getting your battery out, even on, like, say, the X-Ray or something like that, um, looking at their cars from, like, the 21 to the 22 to the 23, they're, like, constantly changing their battery mounting system. Now, obviously, this is kind of built more for a modified, real fast type of 12 scale racing and not this gt12 but they work great with gt12s and you know they're high quality but you know getting these batteries in and out are kind of a pain and they're not meant to come out in those cars because they're going so fast so you've got things like you got to take your shock off got to undo these uh little graphite braces here over here on the crc they actually used an o-ring to go across there and you still have to take your shock out and then when you're moving shocks and stuff like that around, you got your standoffs in there. So you constantly need to check your screws underneath, make sure those aren't loosened. Then, of course, there's all of the setup stuff. So there's terms that I've never even heard before. Terms like tweak, you know, things like that. So, you know, we put these things on like a, a tweak station with like, you know, two scales and everything. And basically... There's two springs underneath here, uh, probably hard to see. And those springs basically control, I guess you could say the, like a tension on the pod and kind of like make everything level. And like kind of what you do is you put both wheels on one on each scale and you kind of sit here and bump the car up and down and you make adjustments to these springs raising them up and down and try to balance out the weights on the scales. Some people also things you can do is you can put like two nickels or something on your tires and then you slowly raise up the front end and whichever falls one first is that you start doing the adjustments and the whole goal is to make them both fall off simultaneously. Besides that, there's your usual things like camber and caster and your weight and then wheelbases and pretty much all that stuff is a set and forget there's your toe toe can definitely be affected a lot on these a little tap on the wall then you're all of a sudden one degree toe out and one degree one and a half degree toe out versus the other tire will totally make these cars do something different every time you turn the wheel so it's super insane but anyway, guys, that is like a overall introduction, beginner type of breakdown that I have on this GT12 class. I hope you guys are excited about it and we'll be bringing you a lot more of this on-road content on the channel. On-road carpet, off-road carpet is the future of RC here in America as shopping malls close down and RC places can move inside and you know rate get high enough profit and margins to like maintain a track and a facility and just keep it going so i think we're in a very good place right now for the growth of american rc and this is a class that is super popular around here along with a 25.5 touring car class so we'll just see how things go i'm all in for right now and loving it that's all i gotta say about that so good to see you guys again thanks a lot and peace